Yeah, I saw a, fun, a funny comment on Twitter, and they're like, "Is Tom Brady doing the, the finishing sessions?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it blows because it seems that way, doesn't it? But yeah, um, it's, yeah. it's, it's like uh, I said at uh, the match. It's like because uh, we have obviously trained at the old uh, Wasp Rugby Club uh, ground. It's as if they've still got the rugby yeah. posts up and they're using <laughs> them as training. But anyway, uh, we, we we won the game. Welcome back to Small Heath Alliance FC. Now, Birmingham City have just come off the back of a brilliant 1-0 win against Blackburn Rovers at home. But on Saturday, we face Sunderland, who are pushing for the playoffs. And also, we're looking like it's going to be a sellout at St Andrews at Knighthead Park. This is going to be a great game. And Dad, I'm really interested to get what your thoughts and expectations are for the game on Saturday. Well, that's an easy answer for me. I'm really excited about the game. I love playing Sunderland. They're one of those teams that always have a really good away following, always sell out. And you've got to respect the distance they travel. Uh, so they're, they're a great set of supporters. And always good banter between the Birmingham fans and the Sunderland fans. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would like us to have a better record against them, though, you know, because I just had a look at it historically uh, how our results have gone against them. And they've definitely had the best of it in recent times. Yeah. Um, I think we've, they had the last six um, meetings, they've won four. We've won one. They've they've yeah. lost one. So it's really it's been them, you know, over the last few meetings. But yeah, yeah really excited about the game, and yeah. particularly off the back of uh, uh, our win against Blackburn. Yeah, I mean, do you remember we were actually at the stadium a like, when we won in about it was about two thousand and two, two thousand and three, and uh, Clinton Morrison scored in about the eighty eighth minute. We won it one nil. It was great. I remember that game really well. You, you sound like me. I should be saying that. I'm, <laughs> I'm the old. I'm the old. I'm the old one in the I'm room. only thirty three for the record. Yeah, because uh, you, you would have been a kid when I took I was about it. eleven or twelve. I think yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant. Good memories. But, uh, good memories. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. And and you know what? As a neutral. I really mean this. Sunderland were one of my favourite teams to watch last year. You know, they had some cracking players. Amad Diallo, Ross Stewart, Dan Neal. Jack Clark's still there this year. Yeah, yeah. The Sunderland fans and team estimate he's probably worth about 20 million. I think somewhere between 15 and 20 is fair. But I think he's going to cause us some problems at the weekend. But thankfully, he's either going to be against Ethan Laird or Cody Drama. So there's going to be an interesting battle there for Sunderland uh, uh, for, the, for the game yeah, on the Saturday. Yeah. Um, same as you. I'm excited to see the Sunderland fans. They normally bring a good crowd and a lot of noise. It's going to be a sellout at the, at the stadium. I think it's going to be a very tight game. Um, I'm actually going to go score prediction. I'm going to go 2-1 Blues. I think I think we will win. Um, Mowbray's got the inside track, hasn't he? You know, coming off um, for Sunderland a, a couple of months back. Yeah. And I think off the back of that win, I think we're going to keep keep uh, keep the momentum going and I think we're going to win on Saturday 2-1. Well, I, I think Sunderland, are, obviously, they're a very good team in the championship at the moment. As uh, but It's worth also clarifying today, as we're recording this today, Sunderland are playing tonight. They're playing, yeah. they're playing Huddersfield tonight. In about tonight, 15 minutes. In about 15 yeah. minutes' time. Um, so, um, at the moment, as we stand before that game, they're ninth in the table. So, yep. they're, just, they're just sort of on the cusp of the playoffs. And they're they're one that, point away from yeah, the playoffs. Yeah, they're in that bunch that keep going in and out of the playoffs. So, they're going to be there or thereabouts. Yeah. They're, they're, recent form is pretty good. They've uh, In the last six games, they've won three, drawn one and lost two. And there's a bit of a blip when Michael Bill took over but yeah. it appears that they seem to be settling down a little bit now and I know um, when Michael Bill took over he did get quite a lot of stick from the Sunderland did, fans yeah, yeah. Um, weren't quite convinced that he was the right man but I think again looking at the social media over the last couple of days some of them are starting to come round now starting to see a bit of what he's planning and you know and I think they're starting to buy in a little bit yeah. um, there's still some that are not convinced by the way but um, their results are improving they're there or thereabouts and interesting you mentioned Jack Clark as well um, he scored 14 yeah. goals this season but the worrying thing for us in this game is 11 of those have been away. Oh, right, okay. he's, he's scored three at the Stadium of Light and 11 at away grounds. Right. So he's one we're going to have to keep a close eye on. And he's, he's, a good, he's a good young player, so I think him in particular. But across the team, you know, they've got Joe Bellingham, yeah. uh, you know, but he, he's he been a starter for a lot of games, but sometimes he's used as a sub. In fact, he, he came on in the last game uh, against yeah. Plymouth and uh, scored a goal when they when they, they were losing that game yeah. uh, 1-0. And he came on um, in the second half and he scored mm. one of the goals and they won that game 3-1. Yeah. So um, there's a good uh, mix of players players in that team that I think we're going to have to be very mindful yeah. of and they've got good pace as well mm -hmm. yeah. which is something we're going to have to guard against yeah. I think the key against Sunderland is not conceding an early goal because Sunderland really know how to hold on to a lead yeah. and we know that Blues aren't great at chasing a game so we need to be in the game as long as we possibly can um, and, I, and I, as, as not just be in the game we need to we need to not be defensive we need to go and attack and I think if he carries on the system he played against Blackburn I think we'll be pretty good I think yeah. I don't think Pritchard I think he's touch and go for the game 
Um, but even I'm happy with Dizal and Paik in the centre mid. I think they're going to make a massive difference against yeah. a team like Sunderland. Yeah. yeah. And just I, I got some stats earlier, right? Just so I can read them off my laptop here. They they average 57% pos- possession in games this year so far over the course of the season. That's pretty good. 57% as an average across. Yeah, but across remember mo- most of that were Mowbray games. They were Mowbray games, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, but they've got a lot of talent. Even their goalkeeper Patterson. They've got a centre half called Hume, Dan Neal. Their core, their centre core is yeah, really yeah. strong, yeah. and they like to dominate the game in the opposition's half. They're a team which are a little bit yeah. unpredictable um, but I think they're going to set up well they're fast I think as you say we need to contain them at the start make sure we're compact at the start and I think I think we'll do okay um, yeah I think Beal was an interesting appointment it kind of felt a little bit like not as drastic but the Eustace Rooney thing because Mowbray yeah. had them in, in and around the playoffs I'm not too sure what happened there with that relationship there was clearly a bit of a breakdown I think it was to do with maybe money and getting players in that, that that's, that's what I read I mean, yeah, I, exactly. I, I mean maybe, maybe Sunderland fans if you can give us a bit of an insight into why Tony Mowbray ended up what were the circumstances around um, you know if you've got any inside information about the uh, reasons in which um, Mowbray departed your club it would be really good for us to know because we, we only read what we see in social media and news and as Matt's pointed out you know or we, we, we heard that it was to, he, he was disappointed with the investment in the team so if you have got any information for us then pop a comment below yeah absolutely yeah. and i tell you what as well uh, Sunderland are pretty solid at set pieces um, and, and we are sometimes a little bit sketchy from defensive corners. So I think we have to be on top of set pieces. You know, Moby and his team will have done the, done the homework on Sunderland. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm, I, you know what? Even as a Blues fan, even if you're a neutral Sunderland fan, I think it's going to be a cracking game. I think it's, I going, think to be, so. I think it's going to be end-to-end. I think it's going to be intense. It's going to be fast. Well, sold out um, St. Andrews as well at Nighthead Park. The, yeah, yeah, <laughs> don't forget, I mean, the atmosphere is going to be absolutely electric. Yeah. I've got a bit of energy about me as a Blues fan at the moment. I'm really encouraged after the back me of the too. Blackburn me game. Too, yeah. and, and I think it's going to be an absolute yeah. belter. Do you know one thing that would worry me is if, if uh, we were a John Eustace team playing yeah, this team? definitely. Because what would worry me is the way John Eustace would set up the team would be to as we've already probably mentioned on, on other podcasts, he's, he set them up as a, a very sort of counter-attacking team. So yeah, we'll, yeah. Now, with a team like Sunderland, um, the best form of defence is to attack, and we will do that, you know. Yeah. Under under Tony Mowbray now, we're, we're having much more possession, getting much more of the ball. And if we've got the ball, the opposition are, are, are less able to hurt us. Mm-hmm. So if this if John Eustace was still our manager right now, and this is no disrespect to John Eustace, he did a fantastic and cracking job with us, with the team that we actually had. But now I'm more confident under Tony Mowbray that uh, when we do get teams good teams that come to St Andrews like like Sunderland and teams um, you know uh, higher up in the in the division I'm much more confident now that we would be in a better position uh, to try and at least draw and win those games rather than almost accept before you go there before we go to the game that yeah, we're yeah. going to have a real real tough yeah. time well I, I, I would have been worried if Eustace was manager I'd have been petrified if Rooney was manager <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think they would have come and done his 3 or 4 nil with the pace and the, the, yeah. the and the skill they've got on the wings, I'm not going to, not going to lie there. Um, but no, I think I think it's going to be a really interesting game. It's going to be fast. It's going to be intense. And I think the more Mowbray gets time, the more confident I am in this team. And I think the Sheffield Wednesday game was a bit of an anomaly. Actually, I think he was testing. He was, you know, the fact Hogan was on the pitch and Sunjic was captain, and all these changes have been made uh, in in the Blackburn game. I think Mowbray's had his time to sort of test the water. I think he knows what he's doing. He's making us a very possession based team. We're way more exciting going forward. Fair enough. There's still a, 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 a click that needs to happen to get us to put the ball in the back of the blooming net sometimes you know yeah, like, yeah. how many times did me and you go oh last night uh, yeah, against the, uh, sorry yeah. the other night against the Blackburn team and um I, I, I genuinely now the difference is I'm going into every game Sunderland are pushing for the playoffs I still think we can go into that game and get and get and get a score get get a win and that's the difference as a Blues fan now I feel like with Moby at the wheel we can actually go into these games with a bit of confidence and I think three points for Blues 2-1 Okay, well, I'm really excited about the game Same. as well. And, uh, you know, the, the results against Blackburn, you know, hopefully now it's a stepping stone and we can we can move on from there. But uh, I am going to be a little bit cautious with this because I do think Sunderland are a very good team. And uh, so I'm actually going to go for a Desmond. I'm going to go for 2-2. Okay. And I, I, I'd be, on the basis of the the, uh, sort of the Blackburn win, I think I'd be happy with the point as well against a really, really good team. Hopefully, if we can get the win... Even better. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, 2-2 two, two for me is where I think I think there will be goals in this yeah. game. It wouldn't surprise me. That I, and, and as I say, my score prediction is also no disrespect to Sunderland. You know, they are they are a cracking side. Yeah. I just think we've got the momentum off the Blackburn win. We yeah. actually put the ball in the net. We scored. And I think we're going to build on that. As, well, as well, we well one thing I will well. say, um, we always uh, try and predict the game when we go to uh, to matches. Uh, and Matt got it spot on last night. And I hate saying that. <laughs> he said it would be 1-0 to Birmingham. I said 3-1 to us. Um, but he, he was actually right. So um, um, I'll give you that one. Yeah. It was pretty apparent. 
down after 15 minutes, we weren't scoring three goals. <laughs> actually, well, mm. actually, having said that, it looked like we had chances, but there was, it was clear we were picking up from the Sheffield Wednesday game of, over the bar, hitting the post. We just weren't getting that ball in the net, were no, we? we, so. we uh, really, in the first 75 minutes, we couldn't hit a barn door, to no, be honest. No. Yeah, I saw a, fun, a funny comment on Twitter, and they're like, is Tom Brady doing the, the finishing sessions? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it blows. Cause it seems that way, doesn't it? But, yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It's, it's like uh, I said at uh, the match, it's like, because uh, we have obviously trained at the old uh, Wasp Rugby Club uh, ground, as if they've still got the rugby yeah. post up and they're using them as training but anyway uh, we, we won the game uh, yeah, absolutely and also we've got a lot of players who are coming back to match fitness you know we have mentioned you Tyler Roberts you Pritchard's now injured you know we've got players um, who are getting back to match practice and it's going to take them time to, to get find their stride and I think when they do it's going to click and we are going to start finding the net a little bit more I can't wait for Pritchard to come, to come back into the team yeah, yeah. Uh, I know obviously it could be to, Sunderland yeah. I think he's touch and go for it though uh, what I read today was he's probably not going to okay. make it but um, he's not far off okay. uh, and uh, you know we've got a, a depth of squad now that we don't need to rush him back absolutely so yeah. it's, all, it's all looking looking good at the moment absolutely mm. so you've just heard our thoughts about the game on Saturday but we'd love to hear from you as we always say on this channel, football is all about opinion. Blues fans, are you excited for the match on Saturday and a full packed out St Andrews at Nighthead Park? Sunderland fans, what do you think the score's going to be? Don't forget to drop us a comment in the section below, like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content.